to get her house in order, I believe it to them. The Bible says the day is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. And church, I don't know about you, but when Jesus comes back, I want to be there. Praise God. And the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 21, verse 24, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Now this world, what's happening, the church, I believe we're in the beginning of the birth pains. I believe if we look at the, the, the floods and the tornadoes and the hurricanes and the pestilence and the sickness and everything, I believe we're in the time, amen, that Jesus is fixing to come back. Amen. It says that they shall fall, fall, by the, fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive to all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth. Distress the nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Now it's not the, the fear that we have. Things are going to take place now. I'll be preaching on the, the two comings of Jesus. Now church, some people don't realize there's two comings of Jesus. Amen. And here in, 20, in Luke chapter 21, he's talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. We talked about after a while. Amen. But church, we're not looking for the second coming. We're looking for the rapture. Amen. I said Amen. we're looking for the rapture. Not even it can happen any time. But Amen. during the tribulation, church, Amen. Men's and people's hearts will be felt for the fear of things that are taking place. If you look on the television today and you can see it, the, I mean, the, uh, that, that island was completely, it looked like a bomb hit it, amen? And, and that's just a little part of what God is showing our nation and even the sinners and the Christians. And I tell you, it's time for the Christian people to wake up and get their house in yeah, order amen. and get themselves in a shape and yeah. that they can be a witness to a lost and dying world. Yeah. Now the Bible says men's heart fell in for the fear and were looking on after the faith which are coming upon the earth, for the towers of heaven shall be shaken, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with great power, with power and great glory. Now he's talking about the second coming, but I want to just for a minute moment talk about the first coming. Now I'm not talking about the birth of Jesus. I'm talking about the Bible says in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 through 18. The Bible says, praise God, that God is going to look at his son. And amen. And tell them to go get Amen the church. Amen. amen. And the Bible says the trumpet shall sound. Amen. Glory to God. Now, church, everybody's not going to hear that trumpet. But all with the, with the Christian years and the spiritual years that we have, we will hear, praise God, to that trumpet. Glory amen. to God. Amen. And the Bible says when the trumpet shall sound, the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise, and we which are alive and remain shall be called up together. Amen. To be with Jesus. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to be with Jesus. The Bible says, praise God, if we have Jesus in this life, we're being most miserable. I want to be with Jesus in the next life. I said, I want to be with Jesus the next life. Glory to God. I'm talking about when we get to heaven, praise God. But you know what, church, as I look in the Bible, and I think it's what God is going to spring out to, I believe with all my heart, people will not be ready, amen, to go in the rapture. Because, first of all, that they have left their first love. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, the church of Ephesus, this was the first church, the Pentecostal church, the, as it was on the day of Pentecost. I mean, they loved Jesus, and, and they sold everything they had, and, and they gave everything they had, and, and they was willing to even die, amen, for Jesus Christ. But somewhere along the road, amen, they begin to leave the first love of Jesus. And we're living in a church world today that the they have left their first love. Amen. Church, I'm not you, but I still love Jesus today. In fact, I love Jesus more today and then when I first got saved. You know why, church? Because I know what He's done for me. He's been there for me in the thick and the thin. When I was sick, Jesus was there. When I was in the valley, Jesus was there. When I went through the fire and the darkness, amen, Jesus was there. When I went through the den of lies, Jesus was there. What are you trying to say? He's my, He's closer than a brother. Glory to God. And that's why I love Jesus tonight. And the Bible said the love of God constraineth us. And church, I thank God that Jesus' love constrains me. Amen. To do a lot of things. I'm here tonight because I love Jesus.
Jesus. You're here tonight because you love Jesus. And church, I'm here to tell you, church, that's what we need to do. Stay in love with Jesus because Jesus is coming back, amen, for those that will love him. And love him. That's right, amen. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 2, verse 5. Remember, therefore, from, work, from which thou art fallen, and repent, and do thy first works, or else I will come unto thee, and which remove thy candlestick out of thy place, except thou repent. But what happened? The church lost their first love. When you lose your first love, amen, you, the honeymoon is over. Can I hear an amen? amen. Can you remember when you first met your husband or your wife? I mean, but they were your first love. You would do anything, praise God, to, to make them happy. Can I hear an amen? amen. But a lot of people are not going to go with the rapture in because they don't love Jesus enough to persuade themselves, amen, and keep themselves in the love of God. The Bible says also few will be part of the rapture. I'm talking about the rapture, church. I'm talking about the only thing that's holding the church back right now is, amen, that Jesus hasn't come back and got him. Amen. I'm looking for us. As the old saying said, I'm not looking for the undertaker. I'm looking for the undertaker. Oh, are you listening to what I'm saying, church? Oh, we need to be ready for the rapture. The Bible says, the disciples, uh, amen, the book that saw Jesus go up, glory to God. The angel said the same way that you saw Jesus go up, uh, he's coming back. And he was talking about the church. Uh, aren't you glad tonight, church? Then you're ready. Praise God. Praise God. But church, many people will not go. I'm talking about the Christian realm. I'm, I'm not talking about the sinners because the church, you know what? I believe the church needs to wake up and let the sinners in the world know that they love God more than anything. But church, the people have lost their strife. And church, we've got to strive for entering this thing. And the Bible says that many will not go up in the rapture and because they have not strived. That means you've got to put an effort in it. Church, me tell you, I put an effort in, in, in yeah, my Christianity. I put an effort, pray God, be ready to go to, amen, to be with Jesus. I pray, I read, I see God. I'm going to have a relationship with Him. And if you don't have a relationship, I'm talking about a personal relationship. Not the kind, see, the devil knows that there's a Jesus. The devil knows that, amen, there's a God. But let me tell you something, I want to know that just more than Jesus or God, I want to have a relationship with and I need to strive. You have to strive. Keep yourself ready, amen, because he's coming back. And that's what the Bible says. Go watch and pray that you that you be ready to go. Amen. That you be found worthy. Amen. See, when the door is closed, when Jesus got back, amen, and that trumpet sounds, you're not going to have time to get ready. See, the Bible says in Luke chapter 13, verse 24. Luke 13, 24. It says, strive, exert, to enter into the straight gate. Yeah. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Amen. But once the master of the house is risen and has shut the door, and you begin to stand without and knock at the door. See, it's too late. Amen. To knock at the door. Was the, was the, amen. The door is shut. When Jesus comes back, amen, for us as a church. I'm talking about a church tonight, church. We need to be ready, praise God. Or as the old song says, praise God, my sins are gone. Where my sins are underneath the blood, praise God. Jesus took them and washed them away. Glory to God. Thank God I'm happy tonight. Thank God you're happy tonight. And sure, don't let the devil tell you you can't be happy because the Bible tells us that there's joy and peace in serving the Lord. I'm here to tell you, church, I thank God I'm a Christian tonight. I thank God Jesus was to come back right now. I'm ready to go, Brother Bill. Look, I'll give all the hands of that church. I'm talking about the rapture of the church tonight. I mean, the, the churches are dying, they're dead, and they're not even looking, praise God, for the Jesus coming back. But he's coming back. I was looking for that day, church. In the meantime, I'm being blessed. The Bible tells us the righteous shall be sealed with the amen with favor. And the Bible says that those are under the shadow of the old body. I've got God's presence. I've got God's love. I've got God's protection. And church, when I was laying in the hospital, so worse, I want you to know something. I got peace. I've got comfort that me because I know my Jesus is right there. Amen. I said, I know my Jesus is there. I know I'm walking in favor. When I look, the Bible says, it tells us, even though I walk through the valley of a shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? 
because my Jesus is with me. I said, my Jesus is with me. And so that means everything to me. I said, that means everything. If you got Jesus, would you walk into the shadow of death? Or would your leg is so sick that you, you know what you're going to do? Yet you got a comfort piece that Jesus is there with you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I will go all the way. I wish somebody to go all the way. I'll give a little hit past your knees. God. But the Bible tells us this is what it says there. What's the what it said when the when the master of the house had risen up there, shut the door, and you begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open up unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not which you are. Now, church, let me tell you, I, I want to have a relationship with Jesus. Amen. And I tell you, I, I said the Lord, I said it again. It takes the blood of Jesus. Yes. Yes. And I tell you, it, it takes coming an old fashioned altar. See, everybody has to come the same way. I mean, you can be rich, you can be poor, you can be blind, you can be black, you can be pink, you can be orange, whatever, amen, you may be. You can come as you are. Can I hear them? Because there's no respect in that person to God. But I've got to come to an old fashioned altar. I said, I gotta come to an old fashioned altar. And I gotta come to my knees down glory to God and look up to Jesus, say, Jesus, forgive me my sins. Because I tell you what, church, he's the only one that can take your sins away, glory to God, and he can change your life. And it wouldn't be too many people was coming in at the altar, didn't get satisfied, didn't stay long enough, and they didn't get a heart transplanted, and they didn't get a new spirit about them because they got up and done the same thing, talked the same way. Amen. I'm here to tell you, when I got to the altar, I changed. God gave me a heart, and he gave me a new spirit, glory to God, and I had no trouble walking in the spirit. Statues of God. I talk about walking in the, in, the, in the biblical way. And church, God can help us, but we can't do it by ourselves. Oh, glory to God. But we got to go while we got time. We got to go before the rapture takes place. And I mean, that's the only thing stopping right now from, from, from uh, things that are going to happen and the second coming of Jesus. Amen. And I'll get that just in a moment. Now, the Biggest problem with the church world. See, I, the, the sinners, it's amazing. Sinners have looked at the Christians today and, and they're confused. Right. I said they're confused. Yeah. Yeah. Because, see, this Christian, a lot of Christian world today, they're in the, these big mega churches. And let me tell you, I'm not like a lot of these churches, and I am like some of the big churches. If it's called when they get there, it's just preaching what people want to hear right. and not preaching them the gospel. Yeah. I'm here to tell you the gospel is good news. Right. I said the gospel is good news. You know what I'm trying to say? I got good news for you tonight. Jesus has come to save you. Yeah. Glory to God. And wash all your sins away. Jesus has come. Glory to God. By his stripes we're healed. Jesus has come. Glory to God. To bless us. Jesus has come. Praise God. That's good news. Praise God. He's, praise God. He's good news he is that he came down and saved me from the wrath to come. He saved me from the devil's hell, church. And hell is real. And churches need to start preaching that way they used to. When I started going to church when I was a young man, they preached hell so hard that you could feel it. Can I hear that? Now they're not even, they can't even say nothing about hell. Trying to run the crowd off. I need to tell you, church, we need to get the crowd in and tell them just like Jesus did. If your hands are in, you shut it off. If your eyes are in, you block it out. If your feet are in, you cut your foot off. It's better go around lame than go to the devil's hell. I'll get on the head See, we're living in the 12th hour, and we need to start preaching this. We need to tell the people, we need to get your heart right. And the churches there are nothing but lukewarm. That's right. yeah. The Bible says that the Laos church, the last church in Revelation, the Bible says that the church is nothing but lukewarm. Yeah. Amen. Right. If you know what it means, you've got Jesus outside look, trying to get in, trying to knock on doors. And there's so much world in the church and so much sin in the church that they can't, he can't even get in. The Bible says that because of the lukewarmness, Revelation chapter 3, verse 15. Now, if we look in Revelation chapter 15, 3 15, I know thy works. See, God knows everything about us. That's right. Amen. And 
We're not saved by works anyway. Amen. But what he's talking about is the thing that we need to do as Christians. We need to pray. We need to seek God. We need to, amen, live a life for God. Amen. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor, not, nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot, so that because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest, I am rich, rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of be gold tried in the bar, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, and that thou mayest clothe, be clothed, be clothed, that the shame of thy necklace do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eyesight that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten me zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. What are you trying to say, Brother Mayer? I'm saying, church, that Jesus is coming back at your church that has some fervor about them. Not some lukewarm church. I mean, this is what I'm saying. We need to be about the Father's business. And we need a relationship with God. And God is not going to accept, accept some lukewarmness. Can I hear an amen? amen? Let me tell you something, church. You might be married before and come up talk, but you give your spouse just a lukewarm kiss and you ain't sure you'll be in trouble. Because, you know what? They say, oh, something's wrong. Something is wrong. Can I hear that man? And that's the same way with Jesus. You don't want to just give your wife and your husband just a little pat, amen, if you tell them that you love them. You need to show them, let them feel. There's something about a feeling. There's something about a relationship. Can I hear that man, church? And I want you to know the same way with the church. God is not going to accept some lukewarm person, amen, because they need to repent, amen, get right with God, and get excited about Jesus, get back to the first love, glory to God, and, uh, and just worship Jesus. Oh, church, if we had people today, I thank God, church, we have a, we have a spirit about us here tonight. I thank God when we see, feel, sing the songs of time, we can feel something. And when people testify, we can feel something. I want to go to a church where I can feel something. I don't want to be entertained. I can go to some concert or something, some ungodly concert that a lot of Christians even go to. And I'll tell you, they need to pray and they need to repent and get back to God. Can I hear they I want to feel something. God not going to send some lukewarmness. Now, what are you trying to say, Brother Myers? Well, then Jesus said, when the rapture is taking place, seven years is going to come up on the world. The church is going to be gone. And at the end of seven years, that's when Jesus, the second coming, is coming. Amen. But don't worry. If you're saved, you don't have to worry about it. Amen, because we're coming back with them. Some people say, I want to go to heaven. I'm going to give you a one-way ticket. Well, you can keep your one-way ticket because I don't want it. Because when Jesus comes back from the second coming, I'm going to come back on a wild horse, glory to God. I'm going to be following Jesus, glory to God. That's what he's talking about. The Bible tells us, praise God, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. Now, church, this is important. Jesus saved us. Jesus made kings and priests, and we're up there being kings and priests, forced by the blood of Jesus. And church, this whole world down here is going to go through chaos. You think that turn your television right now and see all the chaos and see what's happening. God is trying to tell people, amen, as I've done to Israel, I'm going, I'm going to do it to you. America people need to get back to church and need to get back to Amen. Because the Bible said, my people are called by my name. Shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said, I will hear from them. He said, I will hear from them and I will heal their land. Don't tell me it's too late for America. All they have to do is get back to God. I'm talking about the church. Because how the church goes, that's how the people go. Oh, glory to God. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that love, he loves you tonight. Yes. I don't care whether you're lost. If you're here tonight lost, he loves you. Amen. He loves you just as much as he does us. Amen. You know why? Because he died for you. Amen. He died that your sins could be washed away. Amen. The Bible says that, the, that the God, the, amen, even the angels, they celebrate on that one, that one, over the 99. I take you and say, you're not saved here tonight. Let heaven rejoice tonight. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Let amen. heaven rejoice tonight. Glory to God. 
And the Bible says that he said the first, and it says, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And behold, now this is the second coming. Behold, he cometh. This is what he said. Now behold, he cometh. Oh, glory to God. With clouds. Guess what that cloud is? That cloud is you and I. I said that cloud is you and I. The church, amen. I talk about praise God from the Old Testament from the, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. I talk about brother kind of the old saints and the new saints. I hear the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which will rise and make sure be called up together. And church, let me tell you, I don't have a one way ticket. I'm coming back on the cloud. I'm coming back on wild horses, and Jesus is going to be the leader. I said, behold, He come with a cloud, and and Bible says every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that. Jesus is Lord. Glory Amen. to God. I'm going to confess tonight Jesus is Lord and have my sins under the grief of the blood of Jesus Christ and say, praise God, my sins are gone. I've got joy. I've got peace. I've got happiness. I've got a relationship with God. Give the Lord a hand. I've got a relationship with Jesus Christ tonight. Woo, glory, glory, glory. glory. What it says. Verse, six, uh, verse 7 says, Behold, he comes in the clouds. And every eye shall see him. See, when Jesus comes back after church, every eye ain't going to see him. Right. I just the ones that's looking for him. Right. Can I say that again? Yeah. I said every eye ain't going to see him, just those that are looking for him. Those that got the blood of Jesus Christ and those that got a mark, praise God. Amen. God knows His people. He's got a mark. Glory to God. I'm not talking about the mark of the beast. I'm talking about God's mark. God, the Bible said God knows Him. Amen. When Jesus got back, we want to go up to be with Jesus. Glory to God. And we're coming back. Amen. Behold, He comes with the clouds, and every, every eye shall see Him. And they also will pierce Him. And all the kindred earth shall well because of Him. Even so. Amen. Now, in the, in the uh, second coming of Christ, it said there should be signs of the sun and the moon and the stars. And upon the earth there will be distress of nations, bewilderment and perplexity without resource, left waiting, embarrassed in doubt, not knowing which way to turn. At the roaring and the tossing of the sea, men with fear and dread, embrace ex expectation of the things that are coming upon the world, for the very powers of heaven will be shaken. Now the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 13 verse 9 through 11. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate and to destroy the sinners thereof. God is Jesus is going to come back down to destroy the sinners. Amen. Thereof, and it says, for the stars of the heavens and the constellation there shall not give light. The sun shall be dark, uh, darkened, and the going forth and the moon shall uh, not cause uh, her to light or shine. And I will punish the world for the evil and the wicked of the iniquity, and I will cause uh, the earth of, of uh, proud to cease, and will lay low the hottest of that terrible day. What a day that's going to be. First, we need to get ready. We need to keep our house in order. Now, God laid this on my heart. And the Bible says, who shall be able to stand on this day? I think he's going to be able to stand. Glory to God. See, the people are going to be able to say, the heart's going to be felt and everything. They'll be crying to die. See, we don't preach this enough, church. We preach that you know, all the, you know, you name it, claim it, bless it, this, bless it, that, you're going to be okay. But we need to tell them, hey, I'm blessed tonight. I've got good news for you tonight. Amen. Jesus come to save you, lift you up, bless you, amen, give you blessings that you never had. But we didn't know what's going to happen to you we be alone. The Bible tells us in Revelation. Chapter 6, verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in these in the rocks of the mountains. And he said unto the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sat upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For that great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? 
I'll tell you who's going to be at the stadium before I close. Revelation 14 and 9. Revelation 14 and 9. And the third angel followed him, saying with a loud voice, If any man worshiped the beast and the image and received his mark in his forehead, and you will take it. I said, If you will take it, if you're in the rapture, if you miss the rapture, if you go through tribulation. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angel and in the presence of the Lord. Now, verse 20, verse, Revelation 20, verse 4 says, Revelation 20, verse 4, And I saw thrones, and, that's, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they liveth and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Glory to God. That's good news, church. Oh, I, tell you, I thank God. Church, the only thing that's holding Jesus back right now, I'm talking about the church, his body. And Jesus looked for God looks his son and said, go get the church. Go get your bride. Amen. And the church is going to go through hell on earth. I'm telling you. Those seven years will be suffering. Who shall be able to stand? Those that stood against the, the Antichrist and the devil didn't take the mark of the beast. Didn't fall down and worship him. They will be saved. Church, today is the day of salvation. Amen. Today is to keep your house Amen. in order. Amen. Today is to have a day of relationship with your Savior. Amen. And tonight, if the singers will come.